Jacking pears of you, girl I've seen a California sunset I've seen the hills in Tennessee I've seen the beaches down the border I've seen the Georgia heaven green I've seen a blue sky in Kentucky I've seen the Colorado Springs But none of those things are pretty as you Stand it. Let's remove this upstairs. Let me take these two hands and run them through your hair. All these things I want to do are running through my head. Leave your dress in the hall. Rip the sheets off the bed. I've seen the California sunset. I've seen the hills of Tennessee. I've seen the beaches down in Florida. I've seen the Georgia heaven rain. I've seen the blue sky in Kentucky. I've seen the Colorado Springs. But none of those things are pretty as you know me. I've seen the hills in Tennessee I've seen the beaches down in Florida I've seen Georgia every day I've seen the blue sky in Kentucky I've seen the Colorado Springs But none of those things are pretty as you Girl, none of those things are pretty as you know your hair down and let's stay on the couch and put your head on my chest and don't make a sound we can turn off the phone forget about the world is there any one damn thing in it that compares to you girl i've seen the california sunset i've seen the hills in tennessee I've seen the beaches down in Florida. I've seen the Georgia heaven green. I've seen the blue sky in Kentucky. I've seen Colorado Springs. But none of those things are pretty as you. Girl, I can't stand it. Let's remove this upstairs. Let me take these two hands and run them through your hair. All these things I want to do are running through my head. Leave your dress in the hall, rip the sheets off the bed. I've seen the California sunset, I've seen the hills of Tennessee, I've seen the beaches down in Florida, I've seen the Georgia heaven rain. I've seen a blue sky in Kentucky. I've seen Colorado Springs. But none of those things are pretty as you know me. Girl, none of those things are 
pretty as you know What's up, pickers and grinners? Welcome to the Fret Job. The Fret Job is a live video podcast where we touch on pretty much anything with strings or anything that has to do with stringed instruments. The Fret Job is brought to you live from Frizzell Guitars, the home of the Frizzell handcrafted guitar and Kentucky's premier guitar store and full service luthier shop. Frizzell Guitars is located at 18, 816 Stanford Road in Danville, Kentucky. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to my co-host here. He is the professional certified luthier and owner of Frizzell Guitars, Mr. Brandon Edwards. And good morning, Brandon. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Fret Job. My name is Brandon Edwards here. I am the professional luthier, owner, connoisseur, everything you could think of here at Frizzell Guitars. And uh, welcome. Let me introduce my co-host here, Jonathan Recorder. Uh, he is a real estate connoisseur. He is a one of the baddest guys to ever touch six strings, and uh, he's a great <laughs> friend of mine. And welcome, Jonathan Recorder. Love our intros. Good morning, man. Uh, so, uh, Jonathan, I'm gonna let you let you uh, talk about some of these exciting things real quick. While yeah. I'm gonna run off. To the restroom real quick. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So uh, this morning we're going to get into uh, strings and accessories. Uh, glad everybody came out this morning. Uh, you know, I hope everybody's having a good week so far. Uh, strings and accessories. We can go a long ways on this stuff. Um, I will show you this. This is, uh, this is my bucket full of stuff that a guitar player musician stringed instrument player accumulates over you know not, not too long of a time really it didn't take me very long to accumulate a lot of this stuff some of it's junk 
some of it's stuff you're never going to need. Uh, so maybe I can save you the the trouble of going out and and buying that. Uh, let me show you. I can save you the trouble of going out and being in a music store and thinking, well, I need one of these someday. Uh, this is like a pitch pipe, man. For you know, might be handy for like a violin player. Uh, maybe essential for them. But um, so uh, that's one thing I've got in here. And then we've got some parts in here. You know, some bridge pins, things like that. Some pretty cool accessories. I'm going to talk about it. I'm not going to show you all of them because we're going to talk about them when Brandon gets back. But, uh, you know, accessories, uh, different people are after different stuff. Uh, you find different things that make playing guitar easier for you or learning guitar easier for you or learning any, any instrument, really. Um, you know, there's things like picks, you know, uh, I'm sure Brandon and I will probably find out here in a second that we either love the same picks or we can't stand the pick the other guy likes. But um, that's just how it is in music, guys. Um, different people like different stuff. But I've tried a ton of different things, and we're just going to kind of run through some of this stuff and sh tell you about what we've tried, what we like, what we don't like. And we're also going to tell you that just because we don't like it doesn't mean you shouldn't try it because uh, you may be totally different than us. But I see Brandon's back. Um, let's dig into this. I kind of uh, told everybody what we're going to cover today. I showed them the bucket. I did yeah. not get didn't get into detail on it yet because yeah, I'm sure. waiting on you. Yeah. So uh, we'll start off with talking about today's episode. Sorry, guys. Uh, these headphones. I thought I plugged them in last night, but I guess I didn't. So I don't get the opportunity to use wired headphones, wired now that we're a uh, new setup, but no big deal. So uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about some interesting things, but I don't know if you, did you talk about the um, open mic night tonight? Not yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let you talk about that. You got your times and stuff in your mind. Go for it, man. Yeah. So open mic starts at me Pueblo number two. If you're a local here, if you are not, you can skip this part. If you are not around here and you are listening across the, across the pond, across the country, wherever you can ignore this part. But if you're local here, we have uh Frizzell guitars and myself are hosting open mic at me Pueblo number two on the patio. And that is a uh, authentic Mexican restaurant here in Danville, Kentucky. Yeah, so uh, it's in the old Shoney's building. It's on South Danville Bypass. There, you can't miss it. Mi Pueblo number two. Mi Pueblo Tequiro Dos. Taqueria. Yeah, well, Taqueria, <laughs> however you pronounce it. Now yeah. got that Kentucky act. It's saying. all good, man. <laughs> They've got number one, which is down from the store, and number two, where open mic's going to be held. It's a great place. If you haven't been, you need to go come out. There's going to be incredibly great talent tonight. You get to hear me out there doing my thing. Yeah, y'all y'all get out there and check that out. Uh, yeah, he's going to have he's yeah. going to have some good people out there. Oh yeah, they've got great drinks and stuff and they've got great they've got great drinks, they've got great times and hey, good food. Yeah, great foods. I haven't been there for music. I, I'm typically, for some reason, I get in there during the day most of the time. That's just when I have time to get in there. But man, the food is awesome. So don't don't forget to order some food while you're in there. <clears throat> yeah, for and, sure. Uh, don't forget to go load up the car and head out tonight and have a good time. Yeah. Uh, this topic today, Brandon. Uh, like I said, I showed him the bucket, and I, I, I pretty much explained it as. That's the bucket of stuff that a guitar player, a string instrument player, musician accumulates over a short period of time sometimes. Yeah. And sure. uh, some of it's useful, some of it's not. So maybe we'll save them some money for the stuff yeah. that is useless. And a little reminder, didn't you have somebody you want to say hello to? Yeah, uh, I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Danny. Uh, and Danny is at Great Clips. And... Um, I was in there yesterday getting a haircut, and he recognized me. So that's one of my first times being out and somebody saying, hey, are you on YouTube? And uh, so that felt pretty good that we've actually got some people out there that, that are starting to know us and starting to watch the show and enjoy it. So, Danny, thanks for watching, man. Yeah, thanks to all you guys that support, like, share, watch, comment. April, you're there when you get a chance every week just to say She's hello. there every time almost. Thanks, April. And uh, and Richard Poole, he tries to get in here every chance he gets. Justin, there's several of them. 
Dave. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah. And so. you all need to get over and check out uh, Dave Strumfield's uh, social media pages. Yeah, but that guy. Yeah, so. That guy's a super talent, and uh, he supported us, so we need to support him. Y'all get out there and check Dave Strumfield and out. Dave Strumfield's the one that made the beautiful intro music you heard. Absolutely, we are so thankful that Dave sent us that uh, intro jingle. I'm, I mean, it's it's a great little tune, man. I'm I'm tickled with it, and I appreciate you, Dave Strumfield. How tickled are you? <laughs> I'll try to rein him back in here in a minute, guys. <laughs> I just got to mess with him. It's just funny, <laughs> especially especially when we're live. But, yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of great things happening. And uh, last week I had the opportunity to go to Manchester Music Hall and Guitar Tech for Brad, and that was just incredible, man, getting up upon that stage where all that historical people was got on there, all those big names and all those people that have rocked out there. I got to stand on that stage, set up, take down, man. It was incredible. Had our own private green room, all that stuff, man. It was really, really great. I was excited. That's um, awesome, man. That That's a credible place. If you haven't got down there, go to see a show. We put a thing on Facebook with photos of that. Yeah. Y'all check it out. For sure. All right. Topic. Yeah, so topic. So today we're going to be talking about strings and parts. So we're going to be talking about strings and the guitar parts. So we're going to kind of make uh, this, uh, since, you know, we didn't want to, we wanted to make it more than just one short, sweet topic, because you can only talk so much about strings. So we're going to go into guitar parts as well, and we're going to talk about today's topic. We want to see you, we want to see you chime in. Let us know what you think about, uh, about guitar parts. Let us know what you think, your thoughts, your feelings about guitar strings and stuff. And just a little disclosure before we start. Everybody has an opinion, just like everybody has a butt. <laughs> I just want I want everybody to leave here, no no matter if you're watching on YouTube, you're watching on here, we have a friendly discussion. All right, let's get going on it. Yeah, so I'll start off the topic here. He's got his little bucket of goodies. So strings are an incredibly great thing. Can't live without them. That's yeah, for, sure. for sure. Everybody's got their preference. I know me and Jonathan don't have the same preference on strings. Uh, no, but now there there are groups of people that have the same preferences. Uh, they just uh, so, strings is a yeah. thing that people are pretty pretty hardcore about what they like. Yeah, for sure. So, but well, I have tried something new lately. So that's you know I have kind of tried a few things lately. So so here's the thing with me. So I started out, and not just because I'm a dealer. You know, he made the comment one time, oh, you're a dealer, so of course you're going to like it. No, that has nothing to do with my preference of what I like. My preference is, if I, my, my favorite choice of string is Ernie Ball. For, I, and the reason I like it is because, A, I used to use Martin strings a lot on my guitar. But here's the deal with Martin. Martin strings are made in Mexico, and all this different stuff. I for the same price I get a made in the USA string and I like to support USA business. It helps our boys and girls here that work hard to make it. That's one of the first things. Second thing is tone. I like the tonal quality of slinkies on my Les Paul. So this here, I've got slinkies on it. I like the tonal qualities, the capabilities, whatever you want to call it of of, of slinkies. And I'll tell you something. I used to be the biggest fanboy for acoustic strings of Diodario. I mean, I use Martin from here and there, and but I mainly use Diodario. And I'll tell you what. I was very, very, very impressed with uh, Earthwoods by Ernie Balls when I first started using them. Because I'll be completely 100% honest. I don't remember or recall ever using any Earthwoods until I started selling them. And I thought, well, they're probably not as good as Diodario. And they're pretty freaking awesome. I'm not going to lie. I really like the Earthwoods, you know. They're a six, seven dollar pack of strings, your basic pack of acoustic strings, but they're they're pretty got a good sound to them. And yeah, 
<clears throat> I, I like the sound yeah. of a lot of strings. Uh, my issue with strings is I hate changing them. So, yeah. you know, I'm one of those guys that that I want to play an extended play string of some sort, and I have tried many different ones. And some people don't like that kind of string at all, extended play, like coated strings. They think it kills the tone. I do not. I, I think coated strings are some of the best sound. Certain coated strings are some of the best sounding strings out there. But uh, I started out as an Elixir fanboy, and uh, I still love Elixirs. I still got them on half of my guitars right now because here's the deal. There's no string out there, not what the ones he likes, Brandon likes, not the ones I like, not the ones you all like. There's yeah. no string out there that sounds the best on every single guitar to every single player. It just it, Our ears are different. Our guitars are different. Um I've got half of my guitars have Diodario um, XS coated strings on them. They're the New York steel. Half of my guitars have Elixir strings on them. They sound different. Even though they're both phosphor bronze and they're both coated, they okay, sound different. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, for coated strings, man, I'll tell you this 100%. I was, it was either Diodario EXP coated or it was Elixirs for coated strings if I bought coated strings. And I was a huge Elixir for coated strings. I loved Elixirs. I don't like EXPs. Yeah. I like, you know, I, but, I love the new XSs. Yeah. I put, I put, I put Elixirs on my acoustic guitar for a long time. Now, when I say I use Diodario a lot, I use Diodario for, um, for my, for, for my electrics for a while. Yeah. And stuff. But, and there's but, a lot of people out there that still do. And there's a lot of people out there that use Elixirs. Yeah. But I use Elixirs for acoustic guitar. And he, and here's the game changing moment for me. If you want a string that's gonna blow your mind away and last, in my opinion, longer than Elixir, I started using Paradigms. They're Ernie Ball's version of Elixirs. They're coated. They got the earthwood feel. They got the earthwood tone and feel, but they sound incredible. The first time I put it on there, man, it rang out. I got two months, two months, and the guitar still sounded the same as it did when I first put the pack on. That's what impressed me. What kind of price are on the uh, those? Fourteen ninety nine. Fourteen ninety nine. Not bad at all. Um, that's no, oh, no, that's a very competitive price. Um, I have not tried them yet. I, I told Brandon I will, and I will try them on one of my guitars. Hey, soon. thanks for liking the stream, Mister Conley. Yeah, thanks, man. We're glad to have anybody watching the the show, man. We we love our little show here. We have a blast doing it. Um. Right now, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about these accessories, and we're going to talk about parts. We're talking yeah. about strings at the moment. Um, hey, uh, what's... Colby. Yeah, if you're watching, chime in. Tell us what you think. What's your string yeah. preference? What you like? What you use? I mean, I'll tell you a really popular string here at the store, hybrid slinkies. A lot of people love them hybrid slinkies. I really? love slinkies in general, but I love even more hybrid slinkies. I mean, I love them all. Yeah, but, you all. Uh, throw out there your acoustic favorite and your electric favorite, and uh, I'm kind of curious to see what everybody's got on their mind with this. Uh, and we're probably going to end up – we may move on before you all get them in there, but we'll we'll come back and read your responses. Yeah, um, yeah so like – So strings, like you said a minute ago, you can only talk so much about strings. Um, but there's okay. strings aren't the only thing that, that a guitar player needs to, to keep things rolling. Did you read Kobe's comment? Yeah, he put. I've enjoyed a few hybrids you put on a few of mine. Yes, I love them, man. I've you know. I see I've it got now. Hybrids on this thing here. Yeah, I've never used the hybrids. I'll just be honest with you, and and people that have played guitar a long time will probably be like, "What? I have never owned a set of Ernie Ball strings." Like I said, I promise I'm going to try a set of the Paradigms. Yeah. So here's All right. something too I need to mention. What's that? Hybrids are more for, well, I'm sure they probably make hybrids for acoustics, but, you know, typically see it in electric guitars. Yeah, yeah I've more, never used any Jonathan's Ernie Ball an strings. Acoustic guy, so uh, let me tell you, Jonathan, and I'm not trying to bring him over to my side or convince him. I'm just trying to say, you give it a try and you be your own judgment. I'll try. Like I said, I played nothing but elixirs for uh, decades. Try those paradigms on one of your guitars, and, and I promise you, you'll never be disappointed. I will do it. And then, you know, I, I played elixirs for decades, and then I throw I threw those uh, 
uh, Diodario XS is on, and, and they're different. They're not like Elixirs. They have the same type of coating, but they're not like them. They got a different uh, sound. Oh, we got. Answer Colby's I, comment here? Yeah. Uh, Colby Conley says, uh, I recently bought some Ernie Ball not slinky electric toils for semi hollow. Uh, excited to try them. I have always been a Diodario guy for strings forever. That's yeah. the same way I've been for uh, for elixirs on acoustic. Uh, I hope those work work out good for you, man. Sounds like you're uh, kind of stepping outside of what you're used to with those. Yeah, step but out I, of your comfort zone sometimes, guys. Try something. Yeah, Don't be absolutely. afraid to step outside that comfort zone to try something different. Maybe your new go-to string. Yeah, for sure. Don't don't step out in your comfort zone. All that good stuff, you know. Try 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 something. Do different. step out of your comfort zone. <laughs> yes, but try yeah. something. I mean, yeah. you never know. Yeah, I, I had uh, I had some guys just pretty much corner me one day and, and talk me into trying those uh, excesses. I'm glad they did, man. And I'll probably be glad that I try the the Ernie Ball paradigms. Yeah, for sure. So. Uh, like I said a second ago, strings, they're not the only thing that a guitar player needs. So what do you want to go to next? You want to go into accessories, kind of, or you want to go well, straight into parts? Well, well, let's. I got a little more to touch about on strings. Oh, okay. So let's, of course let's bring you do. it. Well, of course, we got, <laughs> well, we didn't talk. Well, we got stuff. Okay, now. But we forgot to mention flat wounds, classical strings, nylon. We still got plenty to talk about up there. All right. So Go for it. Yeah. So a lot of people. I've like, never played a, pair, a set of flat wound, so uh, played, you're on your own here, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I played one set of flat wounds. I really liked it. Not going to lie. So so what's what's the difference in them for you? The difference in them for me is probably been uh, flat wounds or the difference in that is probably. Is it a sound difference or is it a feel difference for you? It's kind of both. It was kind of both. If anybody hears you use flat wounds, comment. Uh, I mean, is it an electric thing? Because I've never known very many acoustic players that play I've, flat I've wounds. I've seen too. some acoustic players use flat wounds. Here's another thing I want to mention. Like, here's something to talk about as well that's not being talked about. Let's talk about uh, nylon strings. You know, what's your well, thoughts on those? I can talk about nylon strings because I've been playing nylon strings for about, I don't know, probably 10 years now. I don't play them on guitar, but I got a couple of sets of nylon strings here. He's a ukulele uh, guy, so. And I'm a ukulele guy, but hey, these same strings, these same companies, they make these same strings for classical guitar. So when I started playing ukulele, I bought a Kamaka ukulele. It had their strings on them. They're black uh, nylon. And there's different materials. Everybody call it calls them nylon strings and i do too but so the first string i found that i love for ukulele and right here's a pack of them these are aquilas and they're made in italy and these are a material called new nile gut and they simulate gut strings and i love them they're awesome they're a white string uh they're almost like uh pearlescent looking uh, and, though, uh great tone great stability and here's something to add to nylon strings when you get them, nylon strings are going to stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. And I stretch my strings. when I, when I I On my yeah. use, I, I stretch my strings as soon I as mean, I put yeah, them on. I mean, you can stretch them, too. Don't get me wrong. And it wrong. sounds scary, but by the, by the end of the night, of the yeah. very day I string them, by the end of the night, I'm stable. My strings are stable. They're just going to stretch a lot. So the first day you put them on, even if you stretch them, after you get on stringing it back up, they're still going to stretch a little bit. And that's my experience of doing set. Here's another stretch. set. Yeah, that's a, you. Um, yeah, so. These are Diodario baritone ukulele strings. And these are, they call them titanium, but they're like a, I don't know. It looks almost them. like fishing line. Yeah, and we've got Ernie Ball uh, ukulele strings here in store. And those okay. are top notch. Okay, cool. Um, they're titanium oh, as well. Some of the different materials that, that they use, and they call it, like like I said a second, they call it titanium. And most of the ones that say titanium, they have that purple hue to them, like a, uh, a, a piece of fishing line. And that's because that's what they are, basically. Yeah. They're made out of the same material the fishing line is made out of. And uh, like he said, they stretch out a lot. But, man, some people act like they don't, or say they don't like the sound of uh 
nylon strings, but if you ever get your hands on a good classical guitar or a good uke and just sit around by yourself, and you will enjoy the sounds that you can get out of those strings. It's yeah, really one hundred percent. So it's fun. Now, now we're gonna go into accessories, and uh, going into accessories, my buddy Jonathan here. He uh, uses the tune as a guitar. <laughs> He's got a pitch pipe. <laughs> no, that's I've I've got this. <laughs> it's for a violin, I think. So uh, years and years ago, when I first got into guitar, I'm in I'm in a guitar store somewhere. I I mean I haven't been playing very long. He still and I'm uses like, that today. Yeah, right. I never used it once. Use it I'm now. In this, I'm in this guitar store, and I'm like. Oh yeah, man! I bet I'll have to have one of those. <laughs> I bet I'll have to have one of those. So oh, I yeah. bought this pitch pipe, blow and I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna blow into it real quick for you. We have too much fun on this. Man, I, I might could incorporate this into my harmonica show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there, look, we speak, and there she is. There's April. How you doing, April? We said, you're hey, one of the welcome, people. April. That you're one of the people that are always here each week, and we're glad to have you. That's right. One of our diehard viewers. And let's take a minute. Since April's here, let's talk about it. Brazil Guitars, April's husband, is the amp repair guy here, Justin, at the store. So, uh, Brazil Guitars is proud to introduce Justin Vanderpool, which is Brazil Guitars' exclusive amp repair technician. We have a state-of-the-art facility in the back back here where Justin fixes amps. We fix anything except PVs, so bring it on down to 816 Stanford Road. Let Justin fix your amp. We have the best prices around. We're one of the only people that fixes amps around. Absolutely. He fixes it every Saturday, and for the past 25 years, Justin has been an electronic technician. So grab that old amp that's been in the back of the closet for the last five years that hasn't worked and drag it down to 816 Stanford Road, Danville, Kentucky, and let Justin take care of you. Yes, for sure. So now we're going to get back to uh, accessories. So let me tell you, there's a lot of crazy accessories. And one of these days when we get sponsored and, you know, we have the money, we're going to buy a bunch of random stuff and we'll show you all all that crap. I've been buying random stuff since I was 20 years old for guitar, well, man. You. But uh, <laughs> there is some random stuff, though, when it comes oh, to... Oh, like, yeah. Like, you can buy that or they're pointless, man. Like, I've seen some things, and it's like, why would anybody ever need or want one of those? And then I realized it's just trying to make money. It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. That's exactly right. But there are some necessities. Yes. Um, I've got one here in the box that I use daily. Here's a question for you. And that is the capo. Well, yeah, everybody knows what a capo is. Gotta have one of them, but some what people it, okay. don't even have one. Here's a question. What is the most useful, useful accessory you bought that you thought was so stupid when you bought it, but now it's a staple in your in your, in your your arsenal? Oh, useful, useful, useful. You thought it was not going to be that good, and now it's a staple in your arsenal. Yep, and I'll tell you why I thought it wasn't going to be that good. I bought, and I use it every day, and you know that. I've got a rechargeable clip-on tuner from Diodario, and I love that thing. When I first got it, Brandon wasn't too hype on it. He, he, he didn't, I don't think he was real excited about the rechargeableness of it. But I love it. I still have to charge it, but I I I, I love that thing. I don't have to buy batteries for it anymore. Colby we'll said metronome. We'll see how long it lasts. I like the recharger. It depends. And Colby said metronome. Yeah, metronome. Yeah, and, and there's uh, I I saw actually saw a video the other day somewhere, and and the thing with metronomes, Colby, from from what I've learned just from experience, is there's people out there that are going to learn to use a metronome. And then there's people out there that are never even going to try to use a metronome. They hate them before they ever even try them. Uh, and you can uh, you can do decent, you know, playing along with the songs and stuff until you you get locked in. But the metronome is a very handy tool if you if you can use one. And yes, one hundred, two hundred percent, whatever percent it is very handy if you can figure out how to use one. Here's another useful accessory. That I have come to like. 
that uh well this is always a great accessory here so the uh drink holder on your mic stand yeah yeah yeah, I haven't had one of them. And the phone, like the little phone holders that hold your phone on your mic stand. Okay. That way, if you got like a set list on there or something like that. Yeah, another thing too is like, uh, let's see. There's like, um, I, I had one in mind that I was I was thinking of, and I just like drew, flew away like a bird, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like from prison barn, it flew away. You'll you'll have that uh, every once in a while. Um, Another thing I w I was going to touch on is picks. You know, there's so many different uh, materials and so many different shapes of picks. And you don't choose the pick; the pick chooses you. Yeah, I I believe that because yeah. uh, I started out. Oh, I've got to show you. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people started out with the with these. I'm going to show you the old standby here if I can find it. I know I've got it in here. Oh, yeah, I do. Right here it is. Old standby. What's it going to look like, Brandon? Um, don't I don't use it anymore. Let's put it that way. I don't know. Really bad. I just show us. Yep, I knew it. That is the beginner's pick. That's like, look at that, man. That's like a Star Trek badge or something, man. It's so Star big. Star Trek badge. I thought that was something else while they go. <laughs> bad location. <laughs> bad location. <laughs> Abort, 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 head location, nah. We just like to, we like to have fun, so. But yeah, a lot of people start out with this right here, man, and uh, I didn't stay with that one very long, but uh, I went for years. I do you like the material, celluloid. Hey. I went for years and used these. Hold up, stop, a, stop one second here. One second here. All you bass players, you don't join this conversation. From Davey504, we better not see you using the pick. <laughs> Fingers only. Oh yeah. man, I've I've never been a bass player, so I can't speak to that very well. Yeah. But did I do have uh, uh, Brandon said that some bass players use these here. Uh, did you all see that crazy video I posted this week? Y'all ever saw? I'm sure bass players. If any bass players are watching, they've saw one of these felt picks. You all see the crazy video that happened this week? I did not. I'm sure he did. He just don't know what I'm talking about. So probably so. so. <clears throat> So I felt, uh, I felt super, I mean, let me tell you, I felt super, super violated this week, man. I'm trying to, I'm sitting up here trying to, trying to shoot a promotional video. And, Should I get uh, my beeper out so I can beep you out? No, but I mean, I'm sitting here trying to do this promotional video and, th and this guy thinks it's cool to play Stairway. Oh, Stairway. You have to play that at home. Y'all seen that funny <laughs> meme video we made? That yeah, was, I saw that. That, that was, was funny, that man. was hilarious. It was just so funny. He took out, yeah. It, it and a lot of people are probably looking like, "What? I love Stairway. I do too, guys. I, I love Stairway but too." But uh, Stairway, that's forbidden riff. It's one of those things that if you're, uh, yeah, it got played so many times in so many music stores that if you play it in certain places, they're like, no, they'll just grab the neck of the guitar and just dead okay, your strings okay, for you. Okay, I know this is kind of on topic, but this is, you know, we're kind of off talking topic. This, well, it's kind of both. So when COVID hit, there was a lot of guys that were doing live streams on their phone playing electric guitar for tips. Well, I used to tip them like twenty, thirty dollars to play Stairway all the way through. Oh, you're kidding me. No, I did that to several different... I'd tip them, and then have to play Stairway all the way through, sometimes sing on electric guitar. It was funny. All the all the forbidden songs. I used to go around. I know I was a troll. That is trolling. <laughs> yes, I did that. I feel I got to get that off my chest, y'all, so I'm going to say it now. But yeah, I did that several, several times, and it's just like, are you kidding me? But they it was funny, it. man. Man, one guy one night said, you're not serious. I said, yes, I'm serious. I tip. Play. <laughs> he had people leaving his stream. He had like 200 people watching. He probably like lost money. <laughs> he probably lost money off I'm of your sorry. tip. Yes, but I tipped. He's He put $20. I'll play any song. So I said, deal. So... Um What's another accessory that you've got? What what about parts? I want you to speak on parts a little bit. Quality right, so is, quality parts, economy parts. Okay, so I, this is a big thing I try to get people to understand here at the store. There is a difference in parts. Okay. 
when I say there's a difference in parts, there is a difference in parts, and it's like it's like uh, it's like well, why is there a difference in parts? Here's the difference in parts, and it's like okay, what's the difference? You can you can buy cheap tuners for ten bucks that have cheap metal, cheap everything else that are not gonna hold a good tune. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. When you're buying these when you're buying these tuners or whatever for your guitar and they're like seventy five excuse me, eighty dollars, you are paying not just for name, but you're paying for quality. Quality alloys, quality metals, quality materials, everything like that. Yeah, and it's like uh kind of think about what you're putting them on, you know, I mean I would never buy the cheap of the cheap tuners because tuners, man, think about that. What what part other than the guitar itself is more important than the tuners? Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing hardly. And here's something I want to add to it. Yes, you can feel the difference in a good tuner when you spin it. Also, the fact the gear ratio makes a difference. Like Oh, yeah. Like the absolutely... The gear ratio. Man. I've had a lot of different brand tuners over the years, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, yeah, I've never bought I, I, a lot. When I first got started in acoustic guitar, a lot of people would tell me, "Don't buy open gear tuners. Don't buy open. Make sure you get in closed sealed." I gear mean, tuners. open gear tuners are not bad. Grover makes no. some. Schaller's good. German Schaller's. I mean, if you buy the good stuff, they're just Clusens. as good. Clusens. There's a yeah. lot of great stuff out there. Uh, now you don't have to go out and buy the four hundred or two or three hundred dollar Waverly set. Um, yeah, Waverly, but, but oh yeah, of course. But they're nice. I mean, they are not. You'll see a difference in them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you'll see a different, definite difference. And uh, this is no joke. One time I seen a guitar. It had solid gold plating tuners with a hundred percent. It had like tuning buttons, and they were like one hundred percent full on, full engraved. Blown. No, they were not engraved. The little, the little, the little buttons, the little machine heads, gear heads you turn, they yeah. were solid pearl. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh yeah, it was very nice. I mean, they were solid, 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 solid pearl. Yeah, that's cool. I've seen like a there. There's some dream tuners I've got out there. Like I've when I first bought the Eastman, uh, I like the tuners on it. I, I mean, they're they're not the best tuners I've ever uh, had, but I do like them. But I got to thinking, man, that thing would look so good with some engraved. Because I, I like slotted I'm go head. I'm going to get something for you, all right? I'll be right back. Go ahead. I like uh, slotted headstock guitars. Uh, I'm an acoustic nut. but uh, So I'll show you the headstock. This Eastman here I've got. Uh, it's got the slotted headstock on it, and these are, I think they're made by Ping. Uh, but when I first got this thing, uh, it's a beautiful little guitar, I started thinking, um, man, that would look awesome with some engraved tuners on it. So I start looking up some engraved Waverly tuners. Golly, guys, you're talking like 300 bucks. Oh, yeah, what's that? That looks basically like the tuners that are on my Martin. I can't read that, Brandon. What is that? Is that a shallow tuner? Yes, made in Germany. Made in Germany, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Richard, my father-in-law, he, he's had a couple of strats that had the shallower locking tuners on them. And, uh, man, he loved those things. And these then the, are, that, these are vintage German made shallower tuners from the seventies. Uh, 70s. now Spurzel and shallower, they're a lot similar, aren't they? Yeah, Spurzel, 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 yeah. however. So yeah. I actually put a set of Spurzels on Brad's guitar. Okay. On the one you built? On the one I built. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I remember like uh, my friend Robbie. He had a, uh, and he actually sold it to Rick. He had a, um, a Strat Plus from the '90s, and it had shallower, it had shallower locking tuners, and then it had a roller nut on it. Uh, that was a pretty nice little Strat, man. 
yeah, so uh, that's uh, incredibly epic. What mm. about roller nuts and stuff like that? Are they gimmicks or they have? Are they? It depends. Cool? And speaking of, I had somebody want me to put a roller nut on their guitar. Really? Yeah, they called me and asked me if I'd put a roller nut on their guitar. What about? Uh, and this is on, on slash off topic. What about like uh, tremellos? I mean, it, it is a part, you know. It's a part that some people change out, tremolos, man. Tremolos, not tremellos. Trem- well, tremolos. whatever, tremellos. Acoustic guy. Uh, anyway, what about what about those? What about like the, the cool. Floyd Let's Floyd talk, Rose yeah. versus the Wilkinson versus the Bigsby? Well, I mean, they're just different things. They both do different things. Like you're asking that, like like a Floyd's different than a Bigsby because a Floyd dive bombs it locks in both places. That's a difference. And then from you know normal, I mean, they're different things. They're they're similar in a way because but they're also both very different things. I mean, they're different types of the same. Not necessarily. Different types of the same class of part. Sort of. You're yeah. you're in the right you're you're you you got you've got the mindset right, but like something you're on all the, blurry, dude. <laughs> What's uh, going on here? Probably because we're at that shawl or Yeah, that's probably what it is. Sometimes you have to put your hand like right over the lens and. Oh, I think you got it. I think you're better. Oh yeah, you got it. You got it, man. All right. Like you so you're saying they're 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 not the same thing, but they're in the same realm. They're like in the same realm. Like and you've got Kayler Bridges, you've got Steps Bar, different things that just just look up and do some homework, guys. And really, 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 you know, figure out there's many great resources, topics and things like that. Have you played many Bigsby's? Yeah, of course. I played Bigsby's, vintage Bigsby's. I played, you know, Electromatics with Bigsby's on it. I played a lot of cool, cool stuff. And there's some even more different ones, kind of like, um, uh, like a Fender Mustang has, you know. That, yeah, that's well, a little different than either one of those. Yeah, just like kind of Fender, it's got the Strat tremolo, you know, and it's just different things. You all figure out what. When you're when you're doing stuff, everybody's got. Uh, well, you know uh, what I did when I had electric guitars. I've I've had three electric guitars. I've had a Godin electric guitar, solid body. It was kind of like a Strat shape. It was like a Strat similar. It had humbuckers, and then I had a um, a USA uh, Strat special with the Tex Mex or Texas special pickups in it. And then I had a Harmony Strat copy was the first one. Every single one of those, you know, one of the first things I did, you can tell I'm not an electric guy. I took the bar off. That's yeah, the first thing I did. he don't. Yeah, so we're going to convert him. We'll, we'll get there. Well, you know, it's not like I've never owned them. I've owned them. I've had really nice amps. I've had really nice electric guitars. They just sat there too much. So that's why I ended up Here's something for you. So there's various different things. Do your homework, do your research, do whatever floats your boat, and uh, that uh, is the the best piece of information that that has come out of this is whatever floats your boat. Yes, we could yeah. talk about a lot of different things, uh, but it, it's whatever floats. You know, like we talked about strings. Whatever floats your boat, man. We could debate, argue, talk, and yeah. fuss, and unless you long. do music. Like, unless you do music full time, chances are you don't have time to do it all in music because you've got other things, uh, other uh, obligations. So find out what you like and put your time into that, you know. Yeah. And guys, don't stop believing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're kind of like Bob and Tom. I can always here. count on you, man. We're we're kind of like Bob and Tom here. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're uh we're we're B and J without the P. So cuz you know J- I like J and B better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh anyway, uh, but yeah. We have a great time and have a good day, April. We have a great time. Yeah, uh, and like like we said, man, all these accessories, these are just our opinions. Um, 
If you, you see all, Jonathan at an open what you mic, like. if you come to an open mic night and you see Jonathan using his pitch pipe, do not be hating on him. <laughs> Don't interrupt me. It takes a lot of concentration to play that thing. <laughs> you know what they use uh, for a pitch pipe? For a while, piano. Yeah, I'm sure. I've I've used piano before. I mean, I, I've I've tried, you know, just tested around with seeing, with a piano and, and tuned a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, the pitch pipe's probably not a necessity for you guys. Uh, clip-on tuners, uh, you know, kind of do some trial and error with clip-on tuners because I've got a couple clip-on tuners that I refuse to use anymore because – they they're way too low or you know something like that they're they're just not accurate some of them aren't uh, yeah. so and test them yes and uh there's people out there they got to get it to the decimal of the tuning like that's how anal they are yeah uh and you know tuning's important but uh I'll tell you you're going to figure you're going to figure out how you like to do it all so I'm going to get a little personal here but this is oh, no. <laughs> that's okay that's okay you know what bugs me to death, and I can say that, and I've probably been in this person too, but I can't stand like when when somebody plays, they get up there and their guitars like like out of tune, and they're like playing, and they know it, and someone's being nice and like here, I got a tuner to offer to give you or something like that to help you tune up, like it's obvious, and they just rock it anyway. Yeah, because they refuse to take something from somebody else, any help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I've a, known people like that. And then there's that guy that's like, oh, no, that tuner is nowhere near know. my ear. And this is you something know. that I, I point out a couple weeks ago, and I say two or three weeks ago, I was at a restaurant eating, not around here, but I was just at a restaurant eating, and they had a guy playing live music. He was an older gentleman. Uh, he was an older gentleman and stuff and uh, had a cowboy hat on. He was sitting there. And, uh, you know, he was singing some songs that he liked and then some old school songs, old school and some, and then he started singing some real corny things. Hey, I dig it, man. He started singing some corny things, stuff like that. But, uh, there was a guy, I guess, going on after his set and he was playing and the guitar, the guy was just being nice. He's like, Hey, if you need a tuner, cause I mean, it was obvious, like it's not like it was slightly out of tune. It was obvious. It was pretty out of tune. Yeah. It was not like it was like a, well, I know it's out. I mean, it was pretty obvious that it was out of tune. Yeah. Well, it wasn't just a tad sharp or, you know. No. It, and he just yeah, continued gotcha. through it. This guy offered to help him out, and he just had the, like, the nastiest attitude. Like, he didn't want any help, and he didn't, and blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't need your help. I've been tuning guitars for a million years, boy. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of guys out there that, that uh, that they they don't want any help, man, and that's fine. I mean, if if, yeah. you, if if you see they're that kind of guy, you're better off just to forget about it because uh, you're probably not going to make a difference in somebody like that. So yeah, for sure. So um, very for sure. So um, we're going to uh, take a little local uh, little local spotlight here with some different various things towards the end of our episode. So, another local spotlight is before it switches to the next play, which is coming up here soon, come out to the Pioneer Playhouse, see Southern Fried Nuptials. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. Robbie, Heather, and all them, they do an incredible job at the Playhouse, keeping it going for as long as they have. And they just do incredible. Robbie's a great director, and they're just great people over there. Yeah. And uh, go, if y'all haven't been there, man, yeah. go check it out. It's, go, it's a historic place, man. It's something to see. It's really something incredible and something to see. And I've I'm been just, to a show and it was awesome. I mean, yes, those actors put their heart and soul in everything they do. Yeah, I mean, they fly in here and drive in here and pilgrimage down here from all over the place, all over the country, to just to be a part of that. So uh, yes, and let know. me tell you. In my opinion, that is the best outdoor theater and one of the best theaters in the state to go see live Absolutely. Live 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 plays, live performances is there. Yeah, absolutely. Y'all check I, that place yeah, out. When I think of live perform when I think of a theater, when I think of any theaters or even outdoor theaters, in my book, that's one of the top top five places in the United States to go. Yeah. In my my opinion, and and I'm very proud that it is a part of our community here, and that I got to grow up with such an historical place. And yeah. um, another place, another little spotlight I like to mention is uh, 
is uh, I just like to like to take a second in here to mention all the customers, man. I want to say this, and I'll say it now. I have a great deal of customers, and each and every one of them, man. They, they're like family. All you guys are like family. And whenever I'm sick or I'm down or something or, or stuff, you guys always pick me up. You guys always take care of me. And I don't ask for it. You guys invite me. You guys invite me to things outside of my work. You guys care about me. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys because you guys make Frizzell guitars. You guys are the Frizzell family. And, you know, it's it, well, that's it's just any a, business is, yes. you know, that's the customers is what makes a business, man. And let me tell you, I cannot express this enough. I have the great group of customers and Absolutely. now family in the whole entire world. There's not a greater group of people than the Frizzell family. And everybody that walks through that door is a part of the Frizzell family. Absolutely. And I mean, um, y'all yeah. need to walk in, walk in there and check out what's uh, what's going on in there right now. Yeah, he's he's got some great see. stuff in there, uh, man. He's 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 set up to build better than he's ever been set up to build. He's ready to to really rock out some uh, some custom guitars. So yeah, and another thing too, by the way, is uh, come on in, see what's a popping. <laughs> yeah, uh, another thing I want to throw out there just uh, while I'm here is, uh, man, if you all need any real estate needs. Uh, I am a uh, sales professional at Lincoln Realty and Auction Company located in Stanford, Kentucky. Uh, the market's still going. Um, there's homes out there available. You all give me a call. I'll, I'll take you out and show you any property that's listed in the state. Um, I can show any of them. It doesn't matter who signs in the yard. I can represent you. So uh, and, give me a call. Uh, yeah. 606-669-8225 is my number. And he's uh, one of Kentucky's best real estate agents. He's selling Kentucky. For well, I, I appreciate that. I, I'll work hard for you. I will promise you that. So, uh, uh, you know, if you want to buy or if you want to sell, give me a call. And one more little little spotlight is uh, y'all. If y'all are visiting Danville or you're here in Danville, another good place is Melton's Deli. That place has been around for a long time. And if you want a good quality sandwich, you want a good family friendly experience, walking in with a smile, that is the place to be. It's a very popular sandwich shop. So and it's great. Yeah. There, there's a that reason happens why. for a reason. <laughs> That's right. They got one out by the cinemas, one there, but. We just like to really brag on our local people because this is something that I want to mention. We're, we're a community together. Regardless of the matter, we got to live with each other. We all need to be supporting each other, loving each other, and we need to be a, be a shelter and a brother when people need it. You're, you're all mushy this morning, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I'm Peace just yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we've got to <laughs> we've got to support each other and we've got to love each other and we've got to be we all live together <laughs> in the same place. And so that's kind of my little word of advice for the week is go out, love thy neighbor as thy friend, come through, be treat somebody better than you want to be treated because you never know what they're going through. So go out this week and eat good food, play good music, and treat each other right. Yes. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So y'all have a great day. Uh, thank you for watching The Fred Job. My name is Brandon Edwards. I'm Jonathan McCorder, and have a great week.